day one of MozCon, and I'm here to interview a lot of people. It's going to be a blitz of interviews from SEOs to link builders to SEMs, PPCers. It's going to be a nice number of interviews. Um, up in the West End right now, the amazing view which you saw from the pre-roll. Um, and I'm looking forward to speaking to a lot of smart people here at MozCon. My first interview for the day is with Paul Shapiro from Catalyst. Paul is well known for his technical SEO chops, and I'll be asking him questions on technical SEO topics beyond even crawling and indexing issues. This should be fun, fun in a geeky way. All right, so with me here is Paul Shapiro. Hello. Thanks for coming. Well, it's not coming, we're at MozCon together, and I asked you to you know, do an interview, and you said, sure, why not? So I appreciate you doing it. Yeah, thank you for doing this. So tell us a little about yourself. Who are you, what you uh, do? I'm Paul Shapiro. I'm the head of SEO at Catalyst Group M. We are an enterprise search and social agency uh, headquartered out of Boston with offices in New York, Seattle, Chicago. Awesome. And you've been a Catalyst for how many years? I think about six years now. Uh -huh. And you've been in the SEO industry for about seven. So before that, so, you so were... I say seven to ten, like okay. depending on how you slice it. Okay. So before that, before Catalyst, what were you doing? I was working at another SEO agency out in, in New York City called Acronym. Okay. And you were in Boston for how long, approximately? Five to six years. While you were basically when you took on the job of Catalyst, you moved to Boston? I actually started in our New York City New office, York City. and my wife moved for a job, and I uh, followed suit. And since we had a Boston office, it was, it was a nice, easy transition. And now you're coming back to New York City area. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm back. I'm happy to be reacquainted with the New York City SEO scene. When you first got into the SEO space, what was like the big thing in the industry that was happening? So I got into SEO sort of very close to when Penguin was released. Yeah. So it was sort of that sort of fallout from, from all the links and everything. And so I, I think I learned how to do SEO a little bit differently than people that came into the industry earlier because of that. Yeah, before it was pretty much all about buying links and right. getting as many links as you can, and now it's a little bit different. You, you're known for in the industry is about technical SEO. Right. And I think you're here at MozCon to talk about technical SEO. So can you tell us a little bit about, I mean, obviously when a customer comes to you, I guess they're more enterprise level, mm -hmm. Uh, what is like the first thing you look at? Um, what's, your, like, what's your plan of action when it comes to technical SEO? Yeah. Then, um, about a minute or two. Yeah, I, I mean, you do like a sort of a cursory look at the website. Uh, crawler start at the robots.txt file, so that's that's a quick check. You do a, a site call and search into Google, see if there's anything glaring right. coming up. Do a site crawl, you know, look for the standard checks. Right. Um, and then you go into the much, much deeper dive. What's going on with the website that way? And do you use any tools for that? Yeah, like everyone I use a crawler, so it's either a Screaming Frog or in the enterprise, I'm very happy using Botify right now. It's, it's a great tool. Um, we use a lot of our own proprietary tools, a lot of tools that I've developed myself. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's something I like to do as a, as a sort of like an ad hoc thing. Like if I feel like I need a certain tool for a certain task, I'll take the time and, and develop it and hopefully it'll be useful later on. And, the, and some of those tools, have you ever like Giving them out to the SEO community for free. I think, I, think have, I, right? I give them out all the oh, time at yeah. conferences. I'm, I'm giving out a whole bunch right now at MozCon. Mm -hmm. uh, and where can they find that if they want to? This um, will be published after MozCon. Yeah, so. so I will. I plan on posting all the scripts to my blog, searchwilderness.com. Um, it'll also be on SlideShare and on the MozCon website through the videos. Can I ask you? I'm just curious. Since you're into like the technical SEO front, when Rel Next, Rel Prev came out, that news that it wasn't supported, yeah. it wasn't being used. What was? Were you shocked by that? I was a little shocked. Um, I also felt sort of bad as an SEO, like not having realized that I was recommending something. Uh -huh, yeah. That you know. You know, clearly everyone else was as well. Not right. even the, the search engineers at, at Google yeah. were, were were aware of it. It was a little it was a little unsettling, I'd say. Can I ask a little bit? So after you that heard that news, and obviously it took a few days just to confirm and settle, sure. and like right, and then people were coming out. All right, what do you do now? That like Realm Next, Realm Prev is out, and Google's like, you don't do anything different. You just do what you're doing. Right. Is that your plan of action for most of your clients that use that, or have you? Yeah, that? yeah. I mean, th there's there's. I forget, there's a great study on someone who sort of looked at the distribution of page rank through different pagination methods. Right. So I, I think looking at the different ways that you can distribute page rank in a, in a paginated series makes a lot of sense depending on how complex the website is. Yeah, I remember back in the old days, like in 2005, it was all about making your site so that First of all, it was all about making as many unique landing pages as possible, like blue, tall, you know, so many keyword variations. Mm -hmm. Now the, the thing is about making the content 
as, you know, not having as many pages, but having consolidated pages and not making as many pages as possible. But back in the day, it was like, make every single right. possible page. So a lot of consolidation is happening now. But I remember like, it was all about how can you make e-commerce sites flow the easiest for the bots? And now we, then they came out with Next World Prev to fix it. I think it was like Miley Oe who was kind of like leading the charge on that. And now that's gone, I think it was just a mistake. And Google's like, you know what? We don't need it anymore, we're gonna get rid of it. And I think the SEO community from a trustworthy perspective were like, what are you doing to us, Google? But I, I think like you said, everybody's looking back at it now. It's like, it just makes sense, I think. So that's good. So obviously you talk a lot about technical SEO, you do a lot of technical SEO. I hear, I think you're here at Moz talking about a little bit beyond mm -hmm. just crawling and indexing and stuff. Can you talk a little about that? Sure, so my, my MozCon presentation, we call it redefining technical SEO. Uh, so very traditionally, technical SEO is things that have to do with crawling, indexing, and in the JavaScript age, rendering as well. I sort of wish to extend the definition of technical SEO. There's a lot of great SEOs in the community doing a lot of things that are applying a technical acumen to, to various aspects of, of SEO that aren't just crawling and indexing. For instance, you know, applying natural language processing towards on-page content optimization, applying data science, SEO testing, things that you might need an engineer to do otherwise if you didn't have a technical uh, SEO on staff. So to SEO testing, how would you, can you talk a little bit more about that when it comes to technical SEO? Yeah, um, so we deal with a lot of uncertainty nowadays in, in the SEO field, um, whether a site will rank, will, whether a recommendation will actually improve rankings. Right. Um, reliance on best practices is, is not always the, the best course of action. So it, it behooves us to actually test things. Right. If you're gonna make a change, on, especially on large websites, these are things we could put into practice and see what the results are. Uh, so, you know, doing a series of variations and controls um, and sort of seeing what works is, is, is good. There's also this whole um, world of experimenting outside of sort of like an A-B testing thing. Right. So like uh, you have a client that, you know, they're planning on doing a new site feature and it may not be something that they want to test in the wild. And you want to understand how Google will behave, how the search engines will behave. So sort of like trying to replicate that website experience on sort of a microcosmic level and, 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 and testing, see what the expected results would be. And that test usually runs what? How long? I think it depends. Like, I, a month would be fantastic. We don't always have a month to run things, yeah. right? I mean, PPC um, is like a couple of days, but with SEO, I think like six months right. or something. It, it also depends, are you running this on an established domain that right. there's various factors involved. So you're also talking about natural logging and processing and stuff like that. I think cars.com, or actually Overstock, told me that they were able to speed up a lot of their personalization on the page, which resulted in obviously not necessarily Google getting personalized content, but the page is loading for the user and obviously Google bought faster. And they were also able to provide a better user experience for uh, their users, which translated mm -hmm. to, I guess, better UX and better uh, happier sure. customers. Is that what you're talking about in terms of natural language stuff or mm -hmm. a little bit different? No, I'm talking about something a little bit different, but that's that's obviously hugely important. Yeah. Web performance optimization, you know, obviously it affects everything. Like if a user gets to a website and it's it's not a fast experience, they're, they're gonna be upset. So natural language stuff, we, it's not about building the natural language so it runs faster, it's more about um, providing content for Google? That yeah, yeah, so I think there's there's multiple ways to look at it. It's uh, from a data mining perspective, understanding the content that's out there, how comprehensive a topic might be, right. and, and maybe applying that some sort of keyword research type uh, scenario. And then there's also the idea of sort of enhancing the content you're creating and making sure that it is you know comprehensive, that you're tackling a topic um, in, in a way that it should be. And is that automated or that's yeah, more of like just of giving it, data to people and then them producing better content? Parts of it are certainly automated. I wouldn't want to entirely automate content, although there's certainly people that are doing work in that space. For sure, yeah. All right, cool. Well, I appreciate your time here at uh, the, the video vlog. What's next for you? How can people find you? Are you speaking anywhere soon? Yeah, uh, so I have my own personal blog, which is searchwilderness.com. Uh, I run a technical SEO conference that's coming back for its third year in Boston in the uh, beginning of December. Uh, it's Tech SEO Boost, just Google it. It's one of the most tweeted about uh, conferences I see. It's like a one, it was a one or two day event? Uh, previously it was a one day, this is a two day event this it's time. Two day event, it's literally like when I sign on Twitter that morning, it's like everybody's blowing up about it, which is great. I mean, a lot of conferences get that, but for some reason, that conference that you run is just people buzz about it like crazy. So congratulations on that. Well, thank you. 
Uh, and then in terms of conferences, I'm speaking at Ungagged in, in Los Angeles, SMX Advanced uh, Europe in Berlin, and we love SEO in Paris. Okay, cool. Maybe we'll have you at XMX as well in uh, New York City. Absolutely. That'd be that. awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Barry. Thanks. Paul's level of genius is just amazing, don't you think? So you know, I've scheduled a boatload of interviews while I'm in Seattle, and I promise I'll get the video quality to be a lot better as I teach myself this camera. Stay tuned for more, and don't forget to subscribe below. Thank you.